Well, good morning. It's uh, Friday morning, just barely. Anyway, wanted to get with you this morning and uh, just share a little bit from God's Word. Psalm 137, a great psalm. I love the psalms. There's some tremendous truths that you find. But in Psalm 137, uh, beginning in verse 1, uh, the Bible says, By the rivers of Babylon, there we sat down. Yea, we wept when we remembered Zion. We hanged our harps upon the willows in the midst thereof. For there they that carried us away captive required of us a song. And they that wasted us required of us mirth, saying, Sing us one of the songs of Zion. And then the psalmist says, How shall we sing the Lord's song in a strange land? And uh, I just want to share some thoughts with you about the song that God has given unto us as followers of the Lord and, and uh, how we can lose our song. And let me ask you the question, have you lost your song today? The Psalms were, were songs that were written uh, over a thousand year period. And uh, there were a variety of authors that God used to pen uh, those, uh, those different Psalms. Uh, and, and in those Psalms, uh, you find that they, they reveal... Uh, the deep emotions of God's people. And oftentimes the emotion that's reflected uh, depends upon the experience that they were facing. A lot of the Psalms, they are, they are joyful as they remember the, the goodness of God, as they reflect on the victories that God had given them uh, down through the years. Uh, some of the songs, uh, the Psalms, the songs of degree, uh, they anticipate uh, the worship that's about to take place, and so uh, they are actually some buildups unto, unto times of worship during the feast and things along that line. Psalm 137, uh, it's, it's uh, cut from a little different cloth. It's, it's not a joyful song at all. As a matter of fact, it's, it's quite the contrary. Uh, it's one of the saddest songs uh, that, uh, that ever has been composed and ever sung in the house of God. Uh, it's, uh, it was written uh, literally by, by someone who wasn't in, in Zion at all. They were uh, prisoners of war at this specific point, and uh, they are singing of a time uh, when, when they, as God's people, were, were in Babylon. They weren't even in the land that God had given unto them. They're, they're in bondage. Uh, they're in slavery. They've suffered great defeat. And instead of, instead of enjoying the blessings God had given unto them, they're enduring the burdens uh, that have come about. Their fruitfulness has turned to, to barrenness. Uh, their happiness has turned to bitterness. Uh, their joy uh, has literally become sorrow. And, uh, and so when you, when you look at the background of this specific psalm, uh, you find that the, the children of Israel, they'd been carried away into captivity all of that had taken place because of their sin, because of the wickedness of their own heart, their, their sin against God. And uh, God judged them and uh, brought about captivity into their life uh, because of their sin. He uses the nation of Babylon as his tool of judgment. And uh, even though Babylon was, was more wicked than Israel, it was still a tool that God used uh, to bring about repentance in the life of his, of his people. Uh, you find that Babylon oftentimes is a, is a picture of the world in all of its iniquity, uh, in all of its idolatry, in all of its immorality. Babylon is quite oftentimes like Egypt, a picture uh, of the world. And so you find the people of God, they find themselves in Babylon, uh, but their hearts were still in Zion. They're weeping in verse 1 because they remembered Zion. Zion, of course, was Jerusalem. It was the city of peace. Uh, and there was a time uh, when they lived there, when they were right with God, when they were holy, when they were happy, when they were filled with joy. But, but now they're in Babylon. Uh, Babylon was a wicked city. Jerusalem was a holy city. And so these captives who find themselves in Babylon, I think they're a picture of, of a backslider. Uh, they're they're a, picture, a picture of the, the modern-day Christian who finds themselves in captivity. They've, they've slipped and stumbled, and they're, uh, they're feeling the consequence of their sin. You and I know there is always a consequence to sin. And so I want to share just a couple of thoughts with you this morning uh, about uh, uh, these uh, followers of God uh, that, uh, that had lost their song. Uh, you find that they, they find themselves in, in, in sorrow, and, and it's a sorrow they can't get rid of. 
um, there, there's this dark cloud of depression that, uh, that's hanging over their heads. And, and there's some reasons why they're sad. Uh, they're, they're sad because of what was in their heart. In verse 1, uh, they find themselves by the rivers of Babylon. It says, by the rivers of Babylon, there we sat down. And, and so uh, they're, they're literally uh, miserable in Babylon. By the rivers of Babylon, we sat down, yea, we wept when we remembered Zion. And so, so from the very moment they arrive and sit down in this new land of Babylon, they're, they're grieving, they're mourning. Uh, the reality is God's folks are going to be miserable in Babylon. We're going to be miserable when we get away from God and we find ourselves in the world. We find ourselves in sin. Uh, the reality is for, for a believer uh, that we, we, we can't enjoy sin. We, we can't be comfortable uh, in sin because, uh, because we realize that it separates between us and the Lord. And so, uh, so sin brings tears uh, to the eyes of a true child of God. We'll, we'll be broken. We'll weep over sin. And, and they're weeping not just because of where they are. They're in Babylon, but they're not just weeping because of where they are, but why they are where they are. If you were to go into the book of Jeremiah chapter 25, you'd, you'd find that, that the reason they're there is because of their sin. It's the judgment of God upon them. And so they realize that they're away from God, they're out of Zion, they're in Babylon, and all of that has taken place because of their sin. Uh, he also mentions that the, the fact that there's some things that are in their head as well. He talks about they wept when we remembered Zion. Zion, again, is Jerusalem, a, a place of God's presence, a place where they, they enjoyed uh, God's work in their life. And, and the reality begins to seek in. They are separated from their father. Their father. They're shackled uh, by their failures. They remembered how things used to be when they walked in obedience, when they walked in fellowship with God. Uh, but now their, their hearts are broken as they recognize how far they've fallen, how far they've gotten away from the Lord. Now, there's a flip side to that. Uh, there are a lot of folks who, who, who claim to be followers of Christ that don't really care about holy living. They're not bothered. Or they're not broken when sin takes place in their life. They never shed a tear over their transgressions. And, and here's why. I think they, they don't, they're not broken or worried or bothered over sin because they have no memory of Zion. And the reason they have no memory of Zion is they've never been to Zion. Uh, they've never been saved. They've never walked with God. And I think part of the reason that so many folks, that, uh, that so many people that drop out of church, uh, the, the reason they drop out is they never were a part of the church to begin with. You know, the church is more than a building. The church is a body of believers. And there's a big difference in belonging to a building and being a part of the body of Christ. Uh, oftentimes you run across folks who say that they used to be in church and they'll, they'll name that specific building, that specific place where a congregation uh, gathers. Yeah, I used to go to that church. Well, the issue is not going to a church, it's being part of the church. And it's part of that, that church that, that meets at that specific location. But, uh, but a true believer is never going to be satisfied. They're never going to be joyful. They're, uh, they're never going to be happy when they're in Babylon, when they're away from God, when they're in a strange land. And uh, uh, when, when we walk with the Lord, we're never going to be satisfied when we find ourselves out in the world. And there's a shame that accompanies that as well. Uh, that, that sin, it brings more than just sorrow. It also brings shame. You know, the world loves to see a, a believer fall into, spin, into sin, especially those of notoriety. And we've seen that down through the years, how how, how the, uh, the, there have been those who've fallen in sin and the shame and disgrace that it brings not only upon them, but upon the entire body of Christ. The devil gets mileage out of that. Uh, we, we even see it on the level in where we, where we live. We've, we've seen it in local congregations when, when people have stumbled and fallen and how they've dropped into sin and the shame that accompanies that. It's, it's difficult for those folks to want to wanna face anybody because of what they've done. And, and I'm just saying unto you, there is a a sorrow and a shame to sin that you better be aware of. If you ever begin down that path, understand this, it is not going to turn out well. For those who claim to know the Lord, it never turns out well when we head down that wrong path. Secondly, I want you to see this. Uh, they, they have a song that they can't sing. So here's some folks that, 
uh, that, that used to be joyful, that used to be rejoicing in the Lord, that used to have great, great uh, joy within their heart, but, uh, but now they can't even sing the song uh, because that joy is evaporated, it's gone. The Babylonians want them to sing. Uh, they tell them to sing. Sing some of the songs of Zion. You know, sing some of the songs about, about joy and happiness. Uh, but the reason they couldn't sing is because they're in this foreign land. Uh, David said in Psalm 32 and verse 7, Thou art my hiding place. Thou shalt preserve me from trouble. Thou shalt compass me about with songs of deliverance. Uh, the reality is the songs that, uh, that, that, that David sang were, were songs of deliverance, and the songs of God are songs of deliverance. You know, the first recorded song in the Bible is found in Exodus 15. It's the song of Moses, and uh, uh, Moses sings just after Israel had crossed the Red Sea. They had escaped Egypt. They'd been delivered from the, uh, the 400 years of oppression uh, they'd, uh, that they'd been in bondage under. Uh, and, and, and the song deals with that, that picture of deliverance. It's a song of praise. It's a song delighting in the deliverance of God and rejoicing uh, in how God had set them free and the things that he accomplished in, in releasing them uh, from the hand of Pharaoh and from, from Egypt. And so deliverance, it elicits a song. Some of the great songs we sing are, are songs of deliverance as we, we think about how, how God has delivered us from our sins. We, uh, we, we sing the uh, some of the great songs of Zion, glory, glory, I'm saved, and, and how we rejoice and celebrate that. I, 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 I love the song that, uh, that we sing uh, oftentimes uh, when, when we talk about my sin, not in part, but the whole is nailed to the cross and I bear it no, no more. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, O oh my soul. It is well with my soul. Why? Because I've been delivered from my sin. Now, I know there's only one thing that robs a saint of his or her song. It's not sorrow. It's not, uh, not, not sorrow over circumstances because that, that can't take it away uh, because God will give a song even in the night. It's not suffering or persecution that takes our song away because Paul and Silas, they were beaten and, and thrown in jail because of their faith. They were tired. They were hungry. They were facing death. And yet they sang a song at midnight that brought the house down. The only thing that can rob a saint of his or her song is sin. And there's only one kind of sin that can rob you of your song, and that sin is your sin. That sin is my sin. It's our personal sin. So can I ask you this morning, have you lost your song? Verse 4, they couldn't sing the Lord's song in a strange land, and quite honestly, either can you. I'm concerned there are some folks that are in a strange land in the spiritual sense. Oh, they may still be residing in the same place physically, uh, but spiritually their heart's far from where they once were, and they've lost their joy. And the only way to get your song back, the only way to get your joy back, the only way to get back where you need to be is to get out of that strange land. Repent of your sins and get back close to the Lord. Do like the prodigal son. Come to yourself, get out from where you are, and go home and go back to the Father. I think we are living in a, in a time where it is a prime opportunity for us uh, to get before the Lord and allow God to speak, allow God to work in our lives. I pray we'd use this as a time of examination for God to get the dross out of his people, to get, uh, to get the dross, the sin, uh, out, of, uh, out of his kingdom, and uh, that God can bring forth a glorious church without spot and without wrinkle. And for that to happen, every one of us have to do our individual, our personal part in examining our own lives and proving ourselves before the Lord. And so I hope that you'll get your song back, but the song only comes back when we get the sin out. And so I hope that we'll take this time to examine our own lives and, uh, and examine our faithfulness unto the Lord. Uh, let's pray together. Father, it's been a good day already. We thank you for it. I thank you, Lord, for the way you challenge us and and I'm grateful, Lord, that uh, you have so, so many benefits that you long to pour into our lives. But, Lord, I'm grateful uh, that you love us enough that even when we, uh, Lord, even when we get away from you, Lord, when we do wrong, uh, when we sin, I'm grateful that you chasten us. I'm grateful, Lord, that uh, you do what is necessary to point us back unto you. Thank you in this case when uh, your people got away from you and sin got into their hearts and lives. I'm grateful, Lord, that uh, that you weren't willing to allow them to abide there. 
I uh, thank you, Lord, that uh, you brought about a consequence to turn them back unto you. And, and so, Lord, I pray for those today that, uh, Lord, they're, uh, they find themselves in sorrow and in shame. They find themselves in a strange land, a strange country, because they've gotten away from their God. Uh, Lord, help them to understand that forgiveness is available. Help them to realize there's a God who still loves them, and the reason he hems them in is to point them back unto him. And so, Father, I do pray uh, that you just uh, encourage that one. But, Lord, more importantly than encourage, I pray, Lord, that you draw them back unto you, that you'd restore them. They cry out unto you for forgiveness. And Lord, they confess their sin unto you, and, Lord, you'd be faithful and just to forgive them of that sin and cleanse them from all unrighteousness. Uh, Lord, help us to be a glorious church without spot or wrinkle. And so, Lord, I pray in these days uh, that you'd be purifying us, that, God, you'd be searching us and proving us, and, and Lord, that we'd be put to the test, and, and, Lord, help us to be found without blemish, without fault. Help us to be the children of God, holy and right in your sight. Lord, we love you. We thank you for every work you do in our hearts and lives, and we just give you praise in the way that you work within us. Thank you again for all that you do, for we pray it in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. I hope that uh, that will challenge you today. Uh, we want to encourage you from time to time. We want to be challenged and to use this time to let God work in your life and, and draw you into a closer walk with him. Get rid of those things, uh, those weights and those sins that easily beset us. And let's be a, let's be a purified body of Christ uh, that he can work in us and work through us for his glory and for his honor. We love you and God loves you. And if you need us or if you need anything, you let us know. God bless you. Hope you have a wonderful day.